Next up, we would like to call Auntie Priya to lead us through the next session of the day, which will be a panel session. Saram, everybody. Saram. Saram, everybody. Saram. Okay, that's better. You all had breakfast and you had baked beans, and baked beans are normally very energetic. So, you know. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I've got, we've got a panel up here. Um, I'm going to go around to the panel and I'm going to get them to select a color. And each color of, well, I've got one brown Malteser in here because I couldn't find a brown jelly bean. But I've got jelly beans in here and each color is associated with a question that I'm going to ask the panel. So, you are choosing the questions, I'm not. <laughs> I think the way I'm just reflecting back on me, um, the way I start my day and do everything, I think Swami, I'm doing this like for me to grow through Swami. I think of Swami, all the activities I do, so even when the challenge comes. Um, the first thing I'm sure. It, you know, when a challenge comes, the first thing you call upon him, but even if it's not a challenge, I think of him all the time. Um, this can be at home, at work, even for all this and the thing. Um, even before I took this role, you know, I was reflecting on me, can I do in Swami's work? I'm, you know, I, everything I'm doing for him, so I need to do it. So that's the way I look at it. Thank you. And for those of you that didn't know, Sister Jayshree is the president of Mount Eden Center. Just recently started, like three months. <laughs> Still a baby. <laughs> okay, your question is, um, how did you get to know Swami? I got to know Swami in a, at a very, very late stage. When I was brought up, my parents had a picture of Swami in the prayer room. My dad wore Shiddhi Baba around his neck, but I was not uh, uh, a follow up Swami. I, and then my, my last year in school, I was, uh, okay, I, I used the word, I was a waste of time in school. <laughs> Academically, I was right there in the back. And I said, you know what, my, every time my, my, my parents said, you know, Swami, why did you pay Swami? First time in my life I went to tell me, please, I'm ready for metric examination, I need to pass this. My mother and father will kill me if I don't do it. I went and uh, I, I, I scraped the pass. I just managed to pass. But, and uh, I still didn't quite get Swami. Like, I didn't get Swami. Then over the years, I, I went and then uh, I met this lovely lady. And she was totally, totally involved in Swami and she, she said, you have to come to Bajans and you know, you, you will, your life will change. And when I met Sister Lady and I, when I, and she introduced me to Swami and my life did change. And my parents were so pleased about this and uh, that, that my life has changed because I met Swami. And I went to the very first, I remember the very first service she took me to. And I didn't know a budget, but the vibration was so good. And when the, in the end, you know, when, when the end was the singing, uh, the, the RST, right? I, 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 I was standing in the back, and I, there's one lady in front of me, she was saying, this is the move, yeah, I'm going to And I said, the vibration was nice. I said, if this is for me, I'm coming here every Thursday. And every Thursday I'm coming. And uh, because of that lovely lady. I, uh, I, 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 I took the no song. He had no choice. <laughs> oh. Oh, sorry. That's, that's, that's how I got to this one. Okay, so that was, that was very moving, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, who's got pink? Uncle Monty, okay, can you give us just one personal experience you have had with Swami? In 1993, in the, since then, 
I had a very strong belief in Swami, and I never looked back. Thank you, Uncle Monty. And Uncle Monty is here representing Papatori Centre. And just in the event you didn't realize this, Brother Teddy is the president of East Auckland Centre. <laughs> uh, who's got yellow? Me, but I ate it. So your question is, what story or stories of Swami do you connect with or have connected with? So Sister Pallavi is our young president of Mount Roskill Centre. I, I don't really have a story. Like okay, I'll change the question. Yeah. How do you connect with Swami? Um, um, I, I would say that in terms of stories, I would say that every story I connect with, because the theme generally is how he's always there. You know, he's, he, you can have that confidence that he's the permanent figure in an ever-changing world. So that's how I connect with him. But I can just share a personal story if you want. Um, I've never seen Swami physically. I've never been able to, you know, go to Prashanti while he was alive. So um, when I was younger, before we had gone to Prashanti, I had a dream one time, and um, I was a lot younger. I was just in high school that time, I think. And in it, it was very clear. I could see Swami very clearly. He was just standing there, and I walked up to him, and. <laughs> All he did was, he took my phone and he said, no, like this in my dream. And I went, oh, what? And it, it was like he was actually there. So fast forward almost 10 years later to 2016 when I made my first trip to Prashanti. Um, we all went in as, together as a family. Some people snuck in mobile phones in their bags. Severdell said nothing, they walked in. But when it was time for me to go in, they stopped me and said, no, <laughs> phone, and sent me off alone. And my mom was worried, like, oh my God, my daughter's gone alone, I can't go inside, and she's waiting outside, she's really worried. But I was laughing the whole way, and I said, Swami, but, okay, I thought I haven't had a chance to see you, but you're telling me that I've already made you. Amazing. Yeah. It just shows you how we all connect with Swami in so many different ways. And Swami plays his little leelas in our lives. Okay, who's got green? Yep, that's the one. Okay, oh, Brother Cyril. Our very own exorcist. <laughs> the president of Balmoral Centre. <laughs> How do you incorporate Swami into your daily life? Well, I think for me, it's just to try and follow his example as best I can. And for me, I draw from different sources of inspiration. A big one of recent times has just been reading about Swami's literature. Everything from Satyam Shivam Sundaram to discourses, um, different um, Vahini series. I pick up a lot um, through a process of osmosis. It's not something that I say, Swami's done this, I'm going to emulate it exactly like this. It's values and certain practices, certain things that Swami's done in his life, his selflessness, his love, his compassion, empathy. Those are things that you can't box into one frame and be like, Swami did this, he went out and served all these people, I'm going to do the exact same thing, and that's the path I need to follow. We all have to search for ourselves where that comes from, and that's, that's kind of what I try to do, so I, I draw inspiration from his teachings. I feel as though he's talking to me personally when I'm reading those teachings, and that he's a personal guide for me. Even when I'm taking two steps back, he's always drawing me one step forward. All the other way around. Two steps forward, one step back. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you, Cyril. That was very inspiring. Um, who's got white? 
Oh, Auntie Jyoti, <laughs> the most reluctant member of this panel, I have to tell you. She, it took a lot to convince her to come on this panel. Okay, so Auntie Jyoti is representing Hamilton Centre today. And your question is, what is the daily sadhana that you enjoy doing the most? I think Swami knows that's what I want to speak about too. Because the sadhana that I really have been enjoying in recent times is praying for people. And I think I shared this as um, in my, what was this, yesterday's session we had on the rice. And um, my sharing on that was the sadhana that I chose to do for this one month. I have been doing this some time, but I thought that I wanted to intensify that particular sadhana and that is praying for people who are really in need. And the people who are really in need could be anything. People who are suffering from illnesses or, or just going through some difficult moments in their life. So when I get to know about this, I... I invoke Swami and I think of these people individually and pray and I add on with the, um, I think most of you might know the Hawaiian prayer, the Ho'oponopono prayer. Yeah, the four lines that says that, I am sorry, please forgive me, thank you and I love you. And the reason being, this, this particular prayer is actually a soul to soul connection prayer. We all are, um, sparks of the same Atma, the Paramatma, we all have little sparks of the same. So when you hear about somebody who is going through some difficult moments, whatever it is, do something small or something big, um, by virtue of knowing of this that's happening, I am connected. I'm connected to that because I'm also part of that soul. So I take responsibility and chant this uh, Paul I am prayer. After speaking to Swami, Swami knows everything. It's just our sadhana is just to do that little bit on our part. So I woke him and I used this fall line prayer and pray for this particular person or particular people. There are so many people in my list now that I pray and um, pray for. And um, I also take moments to connect with these people by messaging them to find out how things are going. And then, if I do not know the people, like for instance, let's say Brother Prashant tells me about somebody who's not well. I do not know the person, but he just happened to share with me. By virtue of that itself, he connected. So, I may say things like, Prashant's friend. I do not know the form, I do not know the name, but I know that this soul is going through something. I think I'll stop here. Okay. So that's a sadhana that I love doing and I'll continue doing with Swami's grace and blessings. Thank you so much. Um, who's got black? Oh, this question's far too easy for you, Brother Krishna. Change it to <laughs> Okay, your question is, um, and, and this is going to be a very interesting answer, coming from somebody who's very knowledgeable about Swami. Um, if Swami were here in his physical form right now and you could see him and talk to him, what would you want to talk about most? Please bless New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the retreat has been such a sending these lovely people here and doing this retreat for all your children in New Zealand. And uh, they have done a wonderful task and have given everyone uh, the inspiration and the motivation that they need to come to you, come to know you better and better each day. That will be my prayer to so Thank you. I have, I have a question to that. So if you're having this conversation with Swami and he's, been, he's sitting here right now and you're telling him that, what do you think Swami's response will be? I'm always there wherever my name is called. I'm always there when anybody thinks about me. I'm always present. You know, when you ask me that question, I was reminded of a bhajan in Tamil that uh, used to be sung many years ago, this is back in the 80s. I don't hear it being sung these days. The last line of the Tamil, the bhajan is, Anbudane ur kanam nenitale, ingirandalam ododi varum padam. What it means is, you don't even have to call his name. Wherever you think about him, he comes running to you. So that will be the Swami, that, that's what Swami will say. 
You know, you don't even have to think, you don't have to pray. As long as my name is called, I'm there. Let me share with you a small story. Many years ago, when Swami said, wherever my name is sung, wherever my glory is sung, I will be there. There was a lady from England who happened to be in Prashanti at that time. She put her hand up and said, Swami, we sing your glory every time in our center in East London. And every time, you know, after that I go around looking, there's no vibhuti. I look at the footstool, there is no footprint. There is nothing, you know. Are you really there? And Swami laughed and said, oh, you want proof. That's what you want, is it? She said, that would be rather nice, she said, in a typical <laughs> English, in a typical English fashion, she said, that would be rather nice, Swami. You know? So Swami said, I'll tell you what you do. You go back, and you know in your, the hall where you have your bhajans, there is a door at the back with an exit sign, just like what you have there, you know? a door with an exit sign. He said, you have a camera? She said, yes. You take your camera with you. When the arati is finished, you just point your camera to the door and take a snap. Okay, that's all he said. And she said, then what happens? You just do that, don't worry. So she went back and she was pondering on the way. Well, I don't know what Swami is saying, you know. Because you see, these avatars, they're always very cryptic, you know. They won't tell you in full sentences what to do. They will give you some, some hidden messages. So she, anyway, she said, since Swami said that, I better do it. You know? So she went back, she pointed her camera at that, that after that, the very next budget, she pointed her camera and took a snap. And uh, then, or it was this the day before, the digital technology and all that, so she sent it down to the pharmacist to have it developed. You know? Sent it to the chemist in London to got it developed. And when she came back, she was looking, you know, you can only get 12 or 24 shots, right? She was going through that. And on the one with the door, there was Swami walking away, <laughs> exiting the door, <laughs> you know. So he says, you want proof? I'll give you proof. You know? And what more do you want? You know, that's the way our Swami is. You know, where the monkey mind plays tricks on you and says, you know, until I get some visible proof, I won't believe you. He will do something to make you convinced. Thank you. That was, that was very, very um, inspiring, it was heartwarming, and thank you for that fantastic example, because I think sometimes, and I know that happens to me, I, I often question, Swami, where are you? You know, um, but, but it, it just, it's very reassuring that Swami is with us always. Thank you. Um, who's got orange? Oh, our lovely Sadna. So Sadna is one of our young adults and she is joining us from Kantaya. So yeah, that is a long drive for Sadna, or oh, not, not a drive, a flight. I took a flight this time. Okay. <laughs> she drive okay. all the time. Yeah. Sadna, how has being in the Sai fold impacted on your life, either personally or work-wise? Sai Ram, everybody. Um, so a little bit of a background as well as I think it's I'll break it down into like different stages of my life because I have been since I was really small my parents immigrated to Malaysia and that's I was I was born in Malaysia and the first time I was I heard of Sai Baba was actually just going to budgets um, and so in that stage in my life all I liked about Sai Baba is singing bhajans and then maybe saying a few slokas and balvikas and that's all I can remember. Um, and, um, and my parents would of course try and the balvikas always helped me to make sure, you know, don't be naughty, be kind to others, um, love all, serve all, all those sort of going to different kind of uh, medical camps with my parents. And so I was not really you know, intentionally doing a lot of those things, but being in the Sai kind of family space just helped infuse that into my own nature and my own being. Um, so that's like my early stage in life. And then I think the next stages of life, um, maybe from teenager to like now almost I'm 
I'm still not, not that old. <laughs> so I, I don't have too many stages in life. But like the critical stage was like uh, when my mom had, um, yeah, she had a big event in her life. And um, yeah, it really made us pray to God, really like to save her. And I think that's when it started. I started trusting him a bit more. Um, and then, yeah, things were difficult. Um, we had to support each other in the family, and that's when we know prayer started becoming a big part of the life um, in a daily routine and singing songs and singing Sai bhajans. Um, but that time also, we didn't actually have the opportunity to go to bhajans because of a lot of things going on in life. But again, it was still infused into my personality, the way I, the things I do in school. They always say I'm very soft. Well, it's just me. I can't change that. So I feel when I'm in the Sai family, that's a bonus rather than being a negative. So, um, so that's like that. And then when I moved to New Zealand, I think that's when everything kind of changed. Um, I moved to Dunedin first, and the first club that I really wanted to get involved in was the Sai Youth Club, and that's where I met Arabi as well. <laughs> and uh, we would do like bhajans in the you send like uh, activities hall and a little room with like a few aunties and uncles, and it would be once a week, and I would be regular, and that would be like my spiritual kind of energizing for the week so it'll kind of it's like recharging my spiritual battery basically and we didn't have many youths it was just me Arami, another another girl and another two other girls and yeah that's when it kind of started and i thought okay how can i actually do more service like what is the most um like my career choice was also leading towards service but yeah, I was thinking, what can I do more? And that's when doing all the activities, um, like even tree planting, or even just you know having the satsangs, uh, like yeah, going to animal shelter, things like which my my parents already kind of infused that into our life. Those kind of things joined together, so I was able to connect with my childhood with whatever um, I was doing with the youth. So that was really nice, and it made me feel happy. Um, and then I guess now I have to trust Swami. So in everything I do, because I'm in the middle of nowhere in Kaitaya, when I, when I moved there, um, even driving to the interview, it was raining and pouring and I couldn't see anything. And actually, the day before that, I had my license, full driving test. And I was like, if I fail that test, I can't go to my interview. Because I had to drive there and um, yeah, things like that. So I just put my whole trust in him and I went to the interview and you know got the job and then everything just felt like I just needed to trust him. I cannot question anything. I think we shouldn't... Questioning is good, but when he says something and you follow that intuition, it actually, like, it's really, like, very, very, very likely that it will happen. Um, so I think in this stage in my life where it's either personal or professional, I just always try and listen to what he's saying through my heart, and he is in all of us. Um, and just, yeah, I, I, I've never spoken on a panel before, but <laughs> it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm still in the early stages where I'm trying to figure out um, how I can live a life of Sai and do everything. And I think coming to the retreats is really good because I don't need to have that filter on to not do things that I don't really want to do and everything I want to do is related to Sai. Like everything. I, my whole life I, I just want to do service, nothing else. And I'm, that's why I feel professionally I've chosen that career and hopefully personally I get to fulfill it in other ways. Yeah, so thank you everyone for listening to my little story. <laughs> How amazing is that? For somebody so young to be so, um, I don't know, she kind of ignites a little spark in every one of us to want to, to be like that, isn't it? Thank you. And I mean, I know I've got two more questions to go. I've, I've not forgotten you, but I just want to actually pay tribute to the three young, young adults on this panel. Um, two of them are presidents of centers, and Sadna was 
Not you. <laughs> and our lovely Sadna. You know, um, when I listen to these young adults and, and I listen to their experiences, in as much as they're so young and they've had these vast experiences and they have this, this vast yearning for Swami, it really is, is very, very, very beautiful to hear. So thank you. You are you're so inspiring as young people to all of us. So who's got purple? Me. Brother Mark. Brother Mark is our um, deputy president of our organization, for those that didn't know. Um, and he uh, is also from the Mount Eden Center. So Brother Mark, your question is, we believe that Swami is omnipresent. How do you feel his omnipresence in your daily life? Yeah, good question. Um, and I'm sure we, uh, I'm sure you all experience uh, so many things uh, every day. And there's so many things that happen in our everyday lives, and certainly in my everyday life. You know, it's a matter of faith. I just believe that, you know, smile means there always. And uh, like even now, you know, you're just talking about it, it makes my voice shaky because you're reminded of his presence, you know. And so I, I just trust and believe that even though I don't see it and don't appreciate it, that he's there for me every single day. And it's mostly such a subtle thing, just so many little things that'll happen, you know, that we all know, you know, something happens on one occasion, uh, some sequence of events might mean nothing, but, you know, sometimes they just fall together in a way that's like pushing the boundaries of coincidence and, you know, as a side of it, you just think, you just think, that's, thank you, Swami, that's just Swami. And that's my experience in my everyday life. And I always try and just feel and think of Swami as being with me like a friend every day, sitting in my car. He sits with me at my meals. Um, he goes to prayers with me. He is everywhere with me. He goes to bed with me. I talk to him all the time as my friend. And so, um, he's my Lord. He's my God. He's my life. Oh my God. Thank you, Brother Mark. Another bit of inspiration for us. So now I come to the last one, and you know, I'm wondering whether this is the right question. I'm trying to think of a different question I can give this guy. But, <laughs> Brother Praveen, <laughs> you must have the, the last one, which is brown. Um, because I feel like Brother Praveen shared something very special. Was it on Friday? Yesterday? On Saturday. He, he shared something very special on Saturday. So I'm wondering if there's more that you're going to share, which I know there will be. Um, but I think my question is, what brought you to Swami? And was there, was there a specific incident or a series of events that have happened that brought you to Swami? Now, I know you answered this. I'm going to try and see if I can steer you away from what you've already told us. Definitely. Uh, Sairam, everyone. Now, I'm not sure because I'm from North Shore. Have <laughs> 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 the president of North Shore Centre? <laughs> I call it not sure. So. Okay, um, this one I'll share. Uh, I believe in Swami's teachings, and I'm, I believe everyone knows his teachings, which are the five human values. So, um, after coming to New Zealand, um, this happened in my family, and the other thing which I believe in Swami is that. You have to believe in your faith, whatever religion you believe in. Believe in that, but come to sight. Even if you're a Christian, a Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, whatever it is. Never leave your religion, but follow it, but come to sight. So the incident happening in my family was where my sister, I've got one sister and three brothers. My sister decided to marry. The boy he chose was a Muslim. So, you know what happens then. Even in Fiji it's the same, probably be the same in India. My parents just didn't want that to happen. Everyone went against my sister. So my sister had to leave home. And then I, together with my wife, Sunita, we only supported my sister. And the reason why it did happen was because I had been, I was with Sai. I was going to the bhajans and I knew about the principles of Swami and every, every religion is the same. There's no, if you 
cut me up, this blood will come up. It's the same. Great. Nothing else. So it was hard for me to get my family into it. My parents just didn't want to know anything about it. Even if I went to my extended family and they decided, no, this is not going to happen. But I had faith in Swami. And managed to convince my parents. And my sister got married to the boy he chose. Because he chose him as a boy, not as a religion, because he was a Muslim. And later on, they are very happy, very successful in life. They have two kids. Currently, they are watching um, in Melbourne, Australian Open, and they are in Fiji. And he as well. They they live in both places. My other brother, he married a Christian girl, but there wasn't. But because of that, my. Uh, the other brother was able to do it. He's, he's got Christian. So, having all those religions in our family is just great. Now, he, if he has something at his place, we go, he comes to our place, everything happens. And it's only because of Swami's teachings. All religions are the same. We are humans, as we say, we are the little bit of a spark of the Paramahatma. And we all will get there, irrespective to how we go. So this is another one of the... I've got plenty too, but I won't bore you. So, believing in Swami, believing in Swami every day is, is, is my go-to as well. I read, even if I have any troubles in life, I, was, I joined the radio side. Guess what? The answer is I deliver every day. Every problem I have in my life, I, I, even if I don't read in the morning, if I, later on if I go and read Sanat and Sarati, there's an answer. And I thought, how am I thinking something in my head? And I get the answer in Sanat and Sarati. So this is the good way to connect to Swami too. Please read the daily Sanat and Sarati radio sign messages. It's lovely, beautiful. And when I get that message, I share it with my family too. If, if, if something is happening in my family, I share it with my family as well. So, thank you very much for letting me speak.